This week's Pilch Point is proudly powered by PureVPN. Make your data your own. The best way to protect your on your privacy online is with PureVPN. You can hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it's available for almost all of your devices, and you can get a special price and a 31-day money-back guarantee by going to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. You know what I wonder since we were, since you bring up VPN? Yes. I wonder <laughs> I wonder if uh, people will start using a VPN service so that they can use TikTok uh, if it's banned in the United States. It is a fascinating question, and uh, it is exactly what happened in India uh, the moment India banned it, and somehow they managed to figure out how to how to keep the ban in place through VPNs. Don't know how it works, but I know India pulled it off. That could be a selling point for someone's VPN. Though. Could be. Hey, we, we, uh, our VPN works with TikTok. Um, you know, if it, it's an interesting so. point, and uh, if it, if it gets banned this week, the first thing I'll do is test to see if I can get around it with pure VPN because I personally have an account. So. Yeah, that so that could be that could be a selling point. So, uh, so uh, this week. Uh, there were just a lot I wanted to talk about. There's a lot of action going on in the chip world, uh, particularly around uh, NVIDIA being really ascendant. Uh, AMD also doing pretty well. And, and Intel uh, having, having to disclose a major, major uh, delay and disappointment. Uh, so... Uh, since uh, our show logo is is green, we'll talk about NVIDIA a bit more. <laughs> also because NVIDIA has a lot going on. Um, so one thing, uh, one thing that is uh, going on is NVIDIA is really on the cusp, and we have a story about this on tomshardware.com, uh, really on the cusp of coming out with its new graphics card. They haven't announced their new Ampere graphics cards yet, what we believe will be called the RTX 3080, but they've stopped selling some of the major last gen cards uh, and you're having, people are having a hard time getting them, which leads us to believe that we will see that new cards could be coming with, uh, should be coming within the next month. Now we don't know this for a fact, but uh, when you, when a company starts uh, cutting off supply of of an older flagship product, that means a new one is probably in the pipeline. Especially, so, uh, especially when you're talking about video cards, which right now have been in a slightly higher demand anyway. So to cut that supply off now lends even more credence to that to that concept. Right, so prices are going up because there's basically a shortage of RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 super cards. Uh, so it's it seems like they it seems like the long-awaited uh, codename Ampere cards could be coming very soon. Uh, we believe uh, early September, perhaps, maybe even sooner. Um, now, that's the video card part of the NVIDIA business. But we know that NVIDIA does a lot more than video cards. NVIDIA is big in artificial intelligence. They have the Jetson platform. They are doing uh, a lot. They're doing a lot of different things. And this week, there's big rumors that NVIDIA could be buying ARM from SoftBank. That would be an earthquake in the tech space, in the chip market. Because for those who don't know, ARM doesn't make any processors, but they make they license the technology behind pretty much every mobile processor that exists. So and, and so many other things, right? Uh, so there's ARM processor, ARM-based processors in every single phone. Uh, Apple is now moving to ARM-based processors for its PCs. We see. Uh, we see them going into Internet of Things, into 
ARM processors are in some servers. Uh, so ARM is becoming, ARM is not becoming, ARM has been huge, but ARM doesn't make anything. ARM comes out with, uh, with the IP and then they license it to companies like Qualcomm, Apple, NVIDIA, uh, smaller name companies like MediaTek and All Winner uh, and, and a slew of different companies, many, many Chinese companies too, by the way. Um, and then those companies take this IP and then they turn it into their own, their own thing, their own chips. But, you know, ARM chips, while there are so many different manufacturers, they all have in common that they use the intellectual property from the ARM company. The ARM company, therefore, it's been kind of important that the ARM company not be too closely associated with any of these companies that use its products to use its IP to make product. What will happen if NVIDIA, uh, which you could argue whether or not they're a direct competitor to Qualcomm or they're a direct competitor to, uh, to Apple, I mean, they're not going directly into phones. At one point, NVIDIA was trying to get people to put Tegra in phones, but that, I don't know if there a single phone ever came out with it. They're certainly not really trying anymore, but to have a single company own the, t own, you know, own the license to the technology suggests that there's a possibility that companies would look elsewhere and we would see we would see other forms of processor pop up if NVIDIA takes control of ARM. Or at the very least, for the time being, companies that are maybe not totally directly competing with NVIDIA, but quite possibly, I mean, I think Qualcomm wants to get into AI and things like that. Uh, Qualcomm, you know, would have to license their tech from NVIDIA. So, app, you know, Apple, which does not use NVIDIA cards in its in its uh, computers would now have to do business with NVIDIA in order to make its bionic chips. So that's kind of an earthquake giving them, giving them control over this. It's almost, it, it's almost like what would happen if HP or Dell bought, went and bought Microsoft, bought windows, right? Would, how would the other companies feel about buying the operating system from their competitor? So this might be the, this might be the uh, the the worst time ever for Intel to have uh, retired their their mobile division. Right. <laughs> uh, now, I mean, I don't know what would pop up in its place in ARM's place. Risk V, may, Risk V, maybe. I don't know. Maybe everyone will just be happy uh, and hope that Nvidia doesn't use the competitive advantage of having arm if they if they successfully uh complete this merger um but they don't use the competitive advantage of arm to strong arm their competitors because it would definitely put them in a really strong position nvidia maybe could then then go and, and try and get into more arm arm markets because if they own arm there certainly would be a lot of synergy there for them so who, who knows, but it definitely would be a big change. May, I don't know ex exactly what Qualcomm and Apple are thinking. Maybe they think this is because maybe they don't view NVIDIA as a huge competitor to them, but it, it is definitely, it definitely could, could be a concern for those companies and, and what the future of ARM might be if they buy it. So that's, uh, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Now, at the same time, what are, what, what are we seeing going on in the x86 world where AMD and, and Intel play? Intel announced this week that they are, expect a huge delay to their seven nanometer CPUs. Uh, AMD has been on seven nanometer already for a year. We won't see seven nanometer from Intel until I think at least 2022. Well, that's not great. And their 10 nanometer desktop chips, I think we're also not going to see for a while. So what we've got here is Intel basically admitting, hey, we're dropping the ball. We're seeing more delays. Some, some heads have rolled there. Their stock price 
at least at one point dipped by, I think, 18%. And AMD's shot up. Uh, and NVIDIA has also had a pretty good uh, good few weeks there also. Uh, it's now most recently at $424 a share. And about five days ago, it was at $409 a share. So it has been going up. So, you know, this is obviously not a good time for, for Intel. And it is a very interesting time for the world of ARM. And AMD continues to be, to really be ascendant. Uh, but it looks like NVIDIA is also ascendant. You yeah, look at this. Wow. Someone should have invested in NVIDIA. So in February, NVIDIA was $240 a share. Okay. Uh, on Friday, it was 424 so the stock price has nearly doubled in six months. That that's that's pretty impressive, right? And if they buy ARM, holy cow! Yeah, you won't can't blame them for wanting to. For sure, but the the thing obviously that we'll have to remember there is that they will still have to deal with the EU, who will not be happy about uh about that possibility and all they'll need is for either qualcomm or apple to go hey but uh and the the eu will get in the way hard but of course they've already considered that (laughs) we we wouldn't be this this far along into the conversations where there's there's talk of interest if uh if they hadn't already had conversations about that so Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. It's certainly an exciting time in the in the world of CPUs and the in the chip business, but it also can be somewhat of a disappointing time <laughs> if you were hoping for some new uh, for some much more powerful Intel processors. Well, that is for sure. <laughs> um, obviously, I know you guys have uh, have got to have have uh, articles on this stuff, right? We, we do. We have uh, TomsHardware.com. We have an article about uh, the uh, the reasons why we think the new uh, Ampere chip is going to be coming out in the next month. We have a story on the homepage right now about the potential merger uh, between ARM and, and NVIDIA. And um, on our most recent episode of the Tom's Hardware Show, which you can find archives of on our site, but also on YouTube, on the Tom's Hardware channel on YouTube. Uh, we discussed on this week's episode everything that's going on with Intel and why uh, and what they need to do and why they're why they're failing. Well, I, you you mentioned stock price. I am looking at at the the year over year right now. And almost exactly a year ago, uh, Nvidia stock price was at its lowest, uh, at 148.77 on August 15th, and uh, the 31st it was at its highest, 424.59. So, what a difference a year makes! Basically, triple the stock wow. price. We should have bought <sighs> bought Nvidia. Certainly more than I have. I've got, I've got a little bit, but not. Not enough to matter. Oh my goodness. Anyway, that's disappointing. Uh, But good for them because they've definitely, like you said, between between their AI stuff, the demand for their video cards, and now the possibility of buying ARM, they're they're definitely positioning themselves uh, as essential. So good on them. They've they've found some niche. Anyway. Uh, I, I appreciate the topic because it's truly fascinating uh, what what's going on there, and not everybody gets to follow it. So, as always, I appreciate it, and uh, I can't wait to see what we talk about next time. <laughs>